Uh, um, Commissioner Sherman. Here. Can you hear me? Yes, I sit here. Okay, sorry. Commissioner Brogan. Squeaky's here. Commissioner McQueen. Here. Commissioner Treach. Here. I'm going to assume you said here. I didn't hear anything. Comm Commissioner Walker. Here. And Attorney Linda Meyer. Here. And also present is Chief of Police James Eisen and Recording Secretary Misty Etuarte. Okay, did everyone have a chance to look at the minutes? Yes. From no November 12th, are there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the minutes. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, old business, uh, did everyone get a chance to look at the email Linda sent regarding the changes to our rules and procedures for the lateral moves? Yes. Okay. Does, yes. I had a few things I will mention, and then if anybody has something else, they can add that. On uh, page two of what was sent to us, I think we need, okay, he, th these were suggestions from the chief, which thank you, chief, for getting the ball rolling. Uh, section three, he added qualifications for lateral transfers. So in our old procedures, we need to change our current number three to number four. And then our section uh, where he's made a change to section four, which I, or five, which is four, which is residency. I think that needs to be changed to Roman numeral five. Is that, does everybody see what I'm talking about? I don't have it in front of me. Okay, it's just a basically a renumbering because he's got uh, one and two. One is application, two is qualifications. Uh, which one A he added? Oh, he changed the the date for holding or taken applications. Section two was titled qualifications. Uh, and Wendy, clarify that you're looking at rule of procedure number one. Right. Okay. Because so each rule of procedure has its own Roman numeral division. So you're on uh, rule of procedure number one. Correct. Well, right. Okay. Right. No, okay. One section A was, uh, it had said in the second paragraph something like 60 days. And yes. We wanted to take that out and put in, uh, we would, the commission would determine the period of time, but not less than 10 days. So if we want to do 30 days or 45 days or whatever we want to do, it's my understanding, then we have the ability to determine the time frame. Does everybody understand it that way? Yes. Okay. Then you go down to section two. He wanted it titled uh, qualifications for non-lateral transfers, which has letters a through E, and then on the first page, he added F, G, H, and I. 
then we need to add, we need to change. Okay, currently Roman numeral three is educational requirements. So we need to make section three qualifications for lateral transfers. And he spelled out the requirements there. Uh, so section three in our old rules that say educational requirements would now be section four. And then section four on page two of the old rules and regs is residence requirement that should be changed to Roman numeral five. Is that making sense? Does everybody see Martha? You're shaking your head. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's basically just a renumbering of the. Okay, then on page two, under rules and procedures number two, uh, which is shortly down the page, we need to revise the order of the testing steps. So I, I think our first step should really say pre-screening applications or what terminology did you use on the, was that what you used, Chief? Applicant pre-screening. Okay, so we need to change. That would be Roman numeral one, right? Physical agility two. Written aptitude would be three. Oral interview four. Applicant rating would be five. And then uh, I think we need to make Roman numeral six the paragraph about uh, the applicant list. Eligibility list would be six. Seven would be background investigation. Eight would be certified voice stress analysis. Nine would be physical exam. Wait a minute. Eight, nine, yeah. Ten would be mental exam. And 11 would be pension board review. So I think we need to add. Or I think we need to have at the start the applicant pre-screening as step one. Does, what does everybody, anybody think about that? Does that make sense to put that in there? Yeah, I think it does. As one of the, because that's the first step in the process. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, so then we'll go ahead the way uh, it was suggested. We'll go down, like I said, we'll just keep the numbering going down, but I think between applicant rating and background investigation, uh, we need to add eligibility list. The applicant rating describes 70% on the personal interview and 30% on the aptitude. Uh, actually, now we need to add, we need to have the composite score adjustment in there after applicant rating. And then the list. So it would be applicant rating, composite score adjustment, that's, you know, uh, military background and stuff, you get a, a little point for that. So after applicant rating would be special composite score, then the eligibility list, and then down. Okay. Five, six, eight, nine, Okay. Now, does that make sense? Yeah. Wendy, I, so I've got now we've got 12 categories, not 11. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. 
because we need to add the applicant list, eligibility list, and then the special composite score adjustment and the applicant pre-screening. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so there was nine listed and we need to add that three. So there would now be 12, 12 sections. Okay, would you read through them again? I want to make sure I've got them in the order that you all are reviewing. Okay, so this is rules, rule and procedures number two. Right. So uh, number one will be pre, uh, applicant pre-screening. Uh, Roman numeral two would be physical agility test. Uh, number three is written aptitude test. Number four, oral interview. Number five, applicant rating. Number six, uh, special composite score adjustment. Number seven, eligibility list. Eight would be background investigation. Nine, certified voice stress analysis. 10, physical exam. 11, mental exam. And 12, pension board review. Got it. Does that make sense, Linda? Yes, got it. And that's the order in which we do everything. Okay. Then um, so, is this the, the um, selection of applicants for both the lateral transfer and the regular applicants? Or will another um, step of selection be for the laterals? Uh, Martha, my thoughts on that and adding provisions for both um, into the rules and regs allows us to do either because once we're done with this uh, lateral, I, I think the intention from what I've gathered from the merit board is to only use the lateral process in times of emergency like now. So that's why there are, are rules uh, listed for both steps or uh, for both processes, the regular process or non-lateral and lateral. Yeah, the one section is just qualifications. And then the other section is uh, selection of applicants, which I think covers any kind of applicant, right? Right. So, Chief, are you saying that for a lateral, your your position is that the laterals go through this same selection as set forth in Rule and Procedure 2? Yes. yes. So, should, then let, let's clarify that, that Role in procedure number two would be selection of applicants and spell out that it's lateral and non-lateral. It, I have it for section two, it says title this uh, section qualifications for non-lateral transfers. And then in section three, which we added was qualifications for lateral transfers. And it says, in addition to all qualifications listed in section two, to be considered for a lateral transfer, you must, and it, then it has the additional qualifications needed for laterals. Well, I think we're talking about two different things. I, I thought what you just talked about was for rule and procedure number one. I'm looking at rule and procedure number two. And that's what Wendy was just talking about on the actual selection of the applicants. The heading says selection of applicants. So right. are you thinking we need to title it selection of all applicants or? Well, um, 
unless it's clear to you all that this does apply to all. So, Chief, Linda, Linda, I'm really confused on what you're what you're asking. You know, I asked you, or I sent you a copy of our rules and procedures. Yes. And and have you got those? Yeah, I've got them in front of me. Okay. When when Wendy was talking at first, where we excuse me, we made changes and put in the qualifications for non laterals. <clears throat> Then she went to the next page under rule and procedure number two. And that's not the qualifications, that's the actual selection process. Right. Top of, the top of the second page, the that selection was highlighted in yellow, is the qualifications for. Okay. Lateral. So section two is non lateral, section three is lateral. Yes. Linda, to answer your question, um, yes, the um, procedures for all applicants, lateral and non lateral, uh, the, the testing procedures or steps, those one through 12, are all the same for both. Okay. Applicants. All right. And, so you're and going I, did to... that in, I did that intentionally. Um, to have to make as few changes as possible. And also, I think it's important that we do a lot of that. We do the same steps because a lot of agencies don't do uh, the physical or mental exam, but these people may have been hired 10 years ago and have developed uh, uh, a mental or physical disability in between now and then. And we don't want to take them at that. Stage. OK, I didn't know if you wanted them to go through the written exam and the oral interviews and and you know because it is time consuming yes but we are going to fast track that's that's what um i was talking with wendy about we're going to do the same um the same steps but we are going to try to fast track it with very little time in between uh um, okay steps. just enough just enough for ipsp to uh calculate to, to do their uh testing uh um review uh, the exam score them and then uh, get you guys their scores. Okay. All right. But yes, the, the steps will remain the same for both. And I think All right. it's best to keep that um, consistent between both. All right. We're going to do the laterals warp speed. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, Martha, did that clear up what you were asking about as well then? That's perfect. I just wanted to see is okay. that. The selection procedure the same and it is and then yeah. um i've just got one question if we can go back to um and i'll just use what's on uh, the chief's sheet what he called section three um in addition qualifications will be a be at least 21 years of age you know or and then is it going to be actually b1 or is it going to be b or c is it going to be, for instance, like A and either B1, B2? And yes. It, so, okay. um, the, and I understand where that confusion uh, lies, but it is worded uh, uh, appropriately because they either have to have completed the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy or a Tier 1 Basic Academy, or they have to have successfully completed um, another post certified law enforcement academy at another state, um, which is, which would have to be a minimum of 480 hours and have at least one year of post academy paid full time law enforcement service. So basically what that's saying is they have to have either completed an Indiana certified law enforcement academy or an academy in another state that has the same tier ranking as the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy. Plus, they have to have one year of full uh, full time experience as a law enforcement officer. OK, so we'll have um, it's going to be a and then it will be B1 or B2 and C. Is that fair to say? Uh, yes. Because B and C is really 
the second requirement, you're, you're either going to have B1, which has completed the, I, you know, that thing. Right. Or you have to completed 480 hours. So what happens is if they have, a, let's say they completed a law enforcement academy in Florida and it's a tier one academy, we will still hire them. But the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy will require them to attend um, the criminal law and traffic law portions of their academy to get certified in Indiana. There are certain things that aren't the same um, as you, you, you know, your lawyer. Uh, laws are different in each state, basically. So, um, but that, that's not an uncommon matter of fact. I think already we have applicants from Colorado and Florida. Okay, so then we'll just remember that A, B1, or B2, and C. Yes, that's fine. Okay, any other comments or questions? Clear as mud? <laughs> I do have another um, question. When we're still talking about rule and procedure number two, you know, we added three categories and rearranged some of these others. But if you turn to page four of the rules and procedures, there's also provision under that rule and procedure for probationary employment reduction in force and reinstatement and then this solicitation you see that yes okay are we just moving those down or taking that out of number two my suggestion would be to keep it in and just move it down okay so then number 13 is that now going to be the probationary employment? Right. Okay. All right. Let me let me get that down. 14 reduction in force and 15 solicitation. All right. I guess I should have changed flipped the page over. Okay. That answers my question. Thank well, you. Wait a minute. That's okay. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Okay. So Linda is going to rewrite all these. And then uh, I guess send them out to everybody and we'll review. And then if I'll check with everybody and if they're good to go, then we'll set a, it says hearing in the thing for a special session, whatever. We will give them to the chief to post and I think it says what the clerk, city clerk or whatever. And then we can, we have to give a 48 hour notice for our special session. Right. Okay. Be, before we go on, before we go on to that, um, if you look at rule and procedure number five on the performance ratings, and it's on page five of the rules and procedures. I don't know how that paginates on what you've got. Okay. But there's one reference. Uh, Chief, it's talking about all police officers shall receive a performance rating once every six months. Yes. Uh, I mean, it, I don't. I don't think that's done, is it? Yes, we do performance ratings every six months. Do you? Oh, okay. Yeah. All so right. This, that section um, pertains to promotion. And what we have been doing with IPSP is um, 
we have never found a, and I'll tell you from multiple um, chiefs conferences, the FBI National Academy, a, top, a hot topic uh, uh, of conversation is always how to um, objectively evaluate employees and fairly do it. So what we have done for years in our promotional exams is give everyone the maximum 15% um, added into their score that's, uh, that's allotted for um, performance evaluation simply because they are so subjective to the supervisors that are evaluating them. Um, and I don't know how to fix that, and neither does anyone else in this profession. Okay. And then Wendy, you're muted. I said it's not just your profession, it's it's across the board. I mean Yeah. 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 It, it is it is very hard. And then um one last thing. Um should we make it clear that we do not have to exhaust our list of lateral transfers before we go back to our um, um, non-lateral transfer list or start a new non-lateral transfer list? Chief, Where you was your intention, Chief, is to this list that we create from the laterals. Is it your intention to exhaust that list before we begin a non-lateral list? Uh, that would be that would be my request. I think I'd like to do it the same way we do the uh, the normal list. If they make the list, we exhaust it before uh, we begin another. Um, and I will tell you, um, we've got as of Monday, so a week into it, we had 25 um, people do uh, sign up for the pre-screening. Not all of them uh, have prior law enforcement, so some of them haven't read the, the requirements, but um, we have eight open positions now, and I have three that are possibly leaving. Um, one is going to retire maybe in January, is what I'm hearing, and two are in federal law enforcement uh, processes, one with the marshals and one with uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security. So we may we may end up having eleven positions to fill this year. We could get through this list pretty quick. Yeah. And then did you have something? Um, yeah, I was going to ask Martha um, pertaining to her question. Where she? I think that's. I think there should be something in there that says it will be at the discretion of the commission of whether or not they uh, expire the lateral list before going to the other. That gives you all a little bit of wiggle room. Linda, real quick, in, in, at any time, if I overextend my uh, opinions, but let me know. But I, I like that verbiage for just about anything that we can use it in that it's the merit board's determination on how because you know as well as i do it's just like right now one of the things that i'm going to come to you with very shortly uh, and i don't want to get into it too much right now is we have almost expired our uh, promotional list and um according to ordinance and according to uh, the merit board rules and regs we can only um we can only do a process on even numbered years and that process that uh, promotional process has to be posted in november of an odd numbered year which takes us into 2022 uh if we you know do it according to ordinance and, and the rules and regs i may be promoting i mean there's a possibility i could have to pr promote people or just have uh um temporary unofficial promotions to rank um if we if we have to do that i don't know we're not there yet but i have got one person on um two people on the lieutenants 
and uh, no sergeants left. So if a sergeant happens to leave, um, we're going to have to get creative. But just something to think about. That's for another day. Um, and that's a headache I don't want to get into unless we have to. But um, I think if we could start um, looking at giving the Merit Commission the authority to decide when we need to vary from situations like that due to exigent circumstances, it would benefit us. Sorry for the rambling. No, that's okay. No, I'm no. just saying, um, yeah, I'm looking at ordinance section 1424 and it talks about November of odd year, years. The What I was going to say is any change we can make to the rule and procedure along with this change for laterals, I'd like to do it. Um, well, we, we can't change that specific. Uh, I know. Because it's under ordinance also. That's right. That's right. Trust me, I've, I've already thought long and hard on this. <laughs> okay. Sometimes things that seem should be very simple are uh, overcomplicated, but um, it's nothing I think we couldn't get done if the time comes and we have to do it. I just kind of wanted to throw that out there that it's a situation that we may be facing because um, like I said, I have no sergeants left on the list and I have one that may be going to the Department of Homeland Security. So then Martha, um, it might be a good spot to put that back up in rule of procedure number one, Roman numeral three, which would be the qualifications for the lateral hiring list, and then add wording at that that would give the discretion to the Merit Commission of either hiring from the laterals or the non laterals. Is I mean, is that what you're thinking or? Well, actually, wouldn't it be maybe from number two selection? Well, selection. Somehow we can put it in there that that we don't we don't have to expire our lateral list before we start. You know, a non lateral list or start hiring from the non lateral list. We can go from either list and then we can uh, make our decision if we need to deviate from one of the lists based on the chief's recommendation. Maybe. And, and where if, specifically, where is it you're wanting to put that? Um, probably in rule. Two, which is the selection of applicants, because that's oh, how we okay. hire people, right? Yes, I don't understand if we're going to do a lateral list, why we don't exhaust that list before we go to a non lateral list. You're saying give the commission uh, the discretion to, to pick from either. Maybe I'm not understanding Martha. I'm just thinking if we have, let's say 20 um, officers on our lateral list. But we want to start, you know, our normal procedure that we don't have to go through all 20 of them before we begin our regular um, applicant pool. Okay, so you're just wanting us to be able to start another process. Yeah, and be flexible. Before, okay, I was going to say, because I don't want us to go back and forth. I don't think that's... Right, right. No, I agree. That, okay. But we don't have to go through all 20 of the laterals before we can even begin doing our traditional hiring. Okay. Yeah, because now we have to go through 35 on our list and then start the process. And then you've got that lag time if you're 
needing to hire. Okay, I, I understand. Okay, anybody, anything else? I just think for the chief's uh, problem that we're facing right now is that we got to fill these eight positions uh, pretty quick. And uh, so I, I would, I would like to see us do, you know, the whole list of laterals as long as he's got openings uh, and fix that problem. And then, you know, we can go to a regular applicant process, uh, you know, to continue on. Mike, Mike, I don't, I think, I don't think that Martha is saying that. I think what she's saying is that let's say you're, you've got a list of 20 laterals mm -hmm. and you're now at number 15 and you know, you're going to have some more openings. Then if we put language in there that we don't have to completely exhaust the lateral list before you can start the non-lateral hiring process. I don't disagree with that at all. Yeah, so that you can keep the keep it rolling, knowing right. you've got to fill more positions. Correct. That's fine. Well, and I have a feeling we'll probably need to be doing that sooner rather than later. Yeah, if we don't have any sergeants, is that correct, Jim? We don't have any sergeants on the list right now? No, the sergeants list is uh, exhausted, and we have two lieutenants uh, on the lieutenants list, um, which is fine, you know, if we were to lose a lieutenant. But either way, um, I, you know, I'm going to be down a sergeant because we're going to be promoting a sergeant to lieutenant. Um, so I foresee this being an issue, um, but it is going to um, it is going to take a uh, ordinance change, and then it would also take another uh, change to your rules if we have to do it. Um, we may we may not we may make it through um, uh, the next year without losing any supervisors. Um, but right now I don't know. I do know that I have one sergeant that is in. Um, a federal process and, and I think he's very uncertain right now as to what he's going to do even if he gets the call from them um, he's pretty happy where he is but um, it pays substantially more than what he's making here so I, I can tell you this I don't foresee a mass exodus anytime soon um, we have uh, several uh, officers who are of retirement age, but as of what I know right now, we have one that's going to be leaving us in about two and a half years. He's put in for the drop, and then one um, just announced that he may be taking a job in January. So, regardless, my plan is by summer we, we should be fully staffed at 71 officers through this lateral. Okay. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yes, it will. <laughs> yes. That would be our top priority right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, anything further on the rules and procedure changes? Okay, so we will anticipate Linda get this sometime in the future. So keep checking those inboxes and then if we have any questions on we'll uh, we can talk individually or you can talk to Linda if you have a question on something. Yes, what, what I'll do is um, retype this and then send out the the new proposed revisions and i try to proofread and proofread and proofread but i always appreciate a fresh set of eyes to catch typos or anything like that so if you all catch it please let me know um, i do have one question uh, with us doing the uh, physical agility is scheduled for January the 16th. Um, 
Mm -hmm. Am I right in saying that these rules will have to be adopted before that that date, right? Yes. Uh, my goal is to get these out. They've got to be uh, on a public notice 10 days prior. So you'll need to post a copy of them at the department chief. And then um, we've got to put them with the clerk treasurer so that they are publicly noticed there 10 days prior. And I talked to Wendy earlier in the week, so as I'm, I'm going to, we've got to get them posted. When did you say your physical, the 16th? 16th of January. Okay, yes. so yeah, we'll have to have them up. And then, um, Wendy, what, refresh my memory, when did we say that we could have a, maybe call just a really quick special meeting that just says, yay, we like them and vote them in too? Well, I think. I think your uh, email you sent out said uh, after the first of the year. Yes, right. So our meeting is on January 14th, the next one. So Excuse me, can I say something? Yeah. Tom, I say something. Can't we just set up a Zoom meeting after we've gotten all the rules and all the posting? The five of us can get together on Zoom by IT and we do we have to wait till the 14th? No. No, that's what we're saying. We're we can saying just yeah, we can just okay. set up a special yeah. session, a very quick yeah. special session. I like that. Yeah, okay. We just have to have the ten day ten day posting at the department and right. the director's office. And then uh I mean once we know that ten day window, we can go ahead and schedule our executive or special session, whatever special session. And then uh, Misty can give 48 hour notice for that. So, yeah, it, we anticipate it'll be done before our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, today's the 10th. Could we do all this by the end of the month? That is my goal. Yeah. Okay. So, very early in January, like the 3rd or 5th or whatever. We yes. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah, and then just again, we have to um, give public notice at least 10 days before whatever date we meet to vote on our rules. Not just the 48 hours, but the 10 days. I, but Misty has to send out 48 hour notice to whoever she sends for our, yeah, right. Well, she can technically do that before we see the bill, so. You know, I would think that that could just be done at the same time. Well, yeah, I would, I would think Linda, couldn't she like on day eight of the 10 day window, she could put out a notice for the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, I think as, as long as you guys go ahead and say you want a special session on 10 days prior to the 16th. Yeah. Um, that first. notice can go out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll at this point wait on Linda to get them retyped or whatever, and everybody review them uh, before I have the chief post them. Because it's just supposed to be the proposed changes, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see. New business. Misty had included, I think, with the agendas, the meeting yeah. dates for next year. Uh, they look like they're still second Thursday of every month. Oh, did anybody have any other old business? Kind of skipped. Okay. Any new business? I don't think anybody's on except us, so there wouldn't be anybody from the floor. Uh, anything from the attorney that we haven't talked about? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I think... I think this horse is uh, sufficiently beaten. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chief, do you have anything else? Um, I do not. Uh, just wanted to thank everyone for working with us on this and um, 
and it's, it's been a long time since we've been fully staffed, but I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Good. Okay. Uh, let's see. No committees. And do we have any claims? I do, but right before that, do I need to get approval for the meeting date? I, I, I don't know. Linda. Well, uh, what do you mean, Misty? I did. I thought when I, my very first meeting, um, that I sat in on, I thought you guys approved the meeting date. Oh, and so you're talking about for 2021. Yes. Well, I think I think it's in the ordinance or even even in the rules of procedure that the merit board always meets on the second okay. Thursday of each month. So okay, I, I just wanted to make sure. I, 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 okay. The record. Or, or okay, maybe um, we should I have a claim in the amount of three hundred dollars. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ms. For Ms. Attorney... No. Yeah. Ms. D, Martha's going to say something on that. So hang up. Just, hang up. Just a minute. Yeah. So why don't we approve it? Because rule eight does say at our December meeting, we determine the time and place of our meetings for next year. So I will move that we approve the list of meeting dates and times as provided um, in the email. We'll second. second. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. Okay. Aye. 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 And you opposed. Okay, then I think I heard Misty say she had a claim for $333 for Attorney Meyer. Yeah, Attorney Meyer services for the month of November and approval for December's per diems for the commissioners. It will be for a regular and an executive meeting. I'll make a motion we uh, uh, pass the claims. Do I hear a second? Second by Brogan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, any comments from commission members? I want to thank uh, Jim for all the work that he's done with this. I think that was a uh, yeoman's effort that he put out uh, for this whole process. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Chief, I mean, I've told you before, I mean, we, we want to work with you however we can. So any suggestions you have, please bring them, bring them to the commission and let us take a look at them. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I really do. I mean, um, well, this has been a monumental task, but I think we're <laughs> rounding, rounding third at this point. Yeah. Well, we're here to, you know, help the department and help you as well. So. Oh, I know. Anytime you need something, just give one of us one of us a call. We'll do. Uh, okay. Nobody from the uh, floor. Do I hear most? Wendy, yeah. Wendy, I want to um, give my usual end of the year uh, thanks to the Greenwood Police Department for it being a very boring year for the Merit Commission. And to me, that always indicates that there's good leadership going on. So. We, I always thanked Chief Lout before that uh, because there's no disciplinary matters. There's doesn't seem to be any upheavals that's not handled within the department. So thank you for another smooth year. Uh, you're okay. welcome. And I, I, I do have an announcement for all of you. Uh, kind of exciting one. Uh, Chief Lout is coming back. He uh, will be starting <laughs> again. He'll be starting January 7th as building security guard at the, the city building. So uh, he, he couldn't stay away too long. <laughs> yeah, couldn't stay away. I actually took him out uniform shopping uh, last week. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> is that what the Shop with the Cop program is? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, I will echo what Linda said. Uh, do we have an executive session after this? I'm sorry. Well, it's just for the members to select okay. questions for the interview. So okay. yeah, you, you can go rest. Okay, thank you. Okay, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, yeah. Merry Christmas guys. Bye-bye. So commission <laughs> members. Uh, oh, Linda Gibson was here. Uh, commission members, you need to join the IPSP meeting now and we'll hopefully zip through that.
How do we do that? <laughs> well, I sent out the email oh. on how to join. Okay, I'll look that up. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wendy.